Jonah read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. A cream of phosphorescent light floats on the wash that to and fro slides round his feet, enough to show many a pendulous stalactite of naked mucus, whorls and wreaths, and huge festoons of mottled tripes with smaller palpitating pipes through which some yeasty liquor seethes seated upon the convex mound of one vast kidney jonah prays and sings his canticles and hymns making the hollow vault resound god's goodness and mysterious ways till the great fish spouts music as he swims end of poem this recording is in the public domain Behemoth from Jonah by Aldous Huxley Read for LibriVox.org by Arthur Coleman His eyes are little rutulent stones Sunk in black basalt. Scale by scale men count the wealth of silver mail That laps his flesh and iron bones. And from his navel, deep and wide As an old cyclops drinking bowl, spring those stout nerves of twisted hide that are his life and strength and soul basking his belly fast asleep he sprawls on the warm shingle bank and the bold ethiops come and creep along his polished heaving flank and in his navel brew their wine and drink vast strength and grow divine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mycenaean Pottery from Jonah by Aldous Huxley. Read for LibriVox.org by Arthur Coleman. Her eyes of bright, unwinking glaze, all imperturbable do not even make pretenses to regard the justing absence of her stays where many a tyrian gallipot excites desire with spilth of nard the bistrid rims above the fard of cheeks as red as bergamot attest that no shamefaced delays will clog fulfilment nor retard full payment of the cyprian's praise down to the last remorseful jot Hail, priestess of we know not what strange cult of Mycenaean days. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Zo Celeste from Jonah by Aldous Huxley. Read for LibriVox.org by Tony Oliva. Au coin le plus obscur du jardin des déesses, d'or le singe idéal dont les immenses fesses étalent de l'azur les éblouissements. Une négresse allait un troupeau d'éléphants, mignons d'Olympe, dont la trompe aux pâles lèvres s'enivre d'un lait noir et qui donne les fièvres. Puis, abreuvés ils vont balançant sur le dos le haut machiculi fantasque des châteaux d'ivoire et de jadis broutés dans la prairie des baleines de cuir rêvant sur l'eau fleurie font jaillir le cristal tournoyant de leurs trombes qui montent vers le ciel se lassent puis retombe avec un clapotis sonore de tambour sur les lotus gonflés de parfums et d'amour comme les chairs en feu de l'anadiomène voici sur l'or de la plage qui se promène bémo et dans l'air voici le roc géant qui pond de temps à autre au giron du néant de nouveaux univers complets chacun garni d'un petit tout puissant qui se croit infini end of poem this recording is in the public domain
sonnet à l'ingénu from jonah by aldous huxley read for LibriVox.org by tony oliva tout en martyrisant les divines mandores du mensonge sacré des mots je songe aux inonchalamment belles à ta voix de colibri avec ta triste voix de colibri tu dors toute imbécilité qu'exhalent les langues d'or dans leurs meurtres de sang à jamais aboli inconsciente tu perces le cœur à vie où je ne puis qu'à peine ouvrir un peu les stores péniblement de mes bouquins moisis j'évoque l'esprit mystique et frais de la sainte à la coque mais sans verve pour moi saigne le sacré cœur tu parles et ta voix de petite ingénue imite un séraphin qui nu sur une nue louant dieu de son psaume infiniment moqueur End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dix-huitième siècle From Jonah by Aldous Huxley Read for LibriVox.org by Tony Oliva Temple d'amour passé Ton style rococo rappelle tristement le rire d'un guéage sur ton hôtel discret les belles de vato vouaient leurs vierges offrandes onzième pucelage derrière tes volets les beaux après-midi elles ont dénoué leurs fripeunes ceintures avec ménagement goûtant le paradis pour peur de violer leurs chastes chevelures mais temple maintenant te voilà négligé car aucun pied furtif ne sonne sur tes dalles et dans l'alcôve froide reste de volupté pousse lubriquement de gros amorphophales End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hommage à Jules Laforgue From Jonah by Aldous Huxley Read for LibriVox.org by Tony Oliva Que je t'aime, mon cher Laforgue Frère qui connaît les nostalgies Qu'engendre les sanglots des violons Et puis, dans la rue, Les pamoisons crépusculaires des orgues Des orgues d'une part trop lointaine barbarie au ciel tu les as sentis percer ton cœur de bon breton tu avais la solitude dans l'âme orphelin par ton génie tu n'as jamais trouvé la femme qui pourrait être l'unique amie parmi les parfums et les froufrous malgré toi ta chair est restée pure et tu en as devenu presque fou tu pensais tu étais un hors nature. Hélas, il faut que l'on vivote selon la nature et le père Aristote. Mais c'était une bien autre loi que nous suivions, toi et moi. Vois-tu, mon pauvre Jules, nous nous sommes faits assez ridicules. End of poem this recording is in the public domain sententious song from jonah by aldous huxley read for LibriVox.org by arthur crollman god's in his heaven he never issues wise man to visit this world of ours uncheck the cancer gnaws our tissues stops to lick chops and then again devours they find who most delight to roam mid castles of remotest spain 
There's luckily no place like home. And so they start upon their travels again. Beauty for some provides escape. Who gain a happiness in eyeing? The gorgeous buttocks of the ape. Or autumn sunsets exquisitely dying. Some swoon before the uplifted host, or gazing on their navels find, both Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, in that small arc of ecstasy confined. And some, to better worlds than this, mount up on wings as frail and misty, as passion's all too transient kiss. Though afterwards, O oh, Omni animal tristi. But I, too rational by half, to live but where I bodily am, can only do my best to laugh, can only sip my misery dram by dram. While happier mortals take to drink, a dolorous dipsomaniac, fuddled with grief, I sit and think, looking upon the bile when it is black. Chorus in unison. Then brim the bowl with atrabilious liquor. We'll pledge our empire vast across the flood. For blood, as all men know, than water's thicker. But water's wider, thank the Lord, than blood. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Oxford Volunteers from Jonah by Aldous Huxley Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Pyle The Oxford Volunteers The volunteers in vomit color Go forth to shoot the Lamb of God. Their leaden faces redden To a blazing comet color, And they sweat as they plod. Parson and Poet Laureate, Professor, Grocer, Dawn, this one as fat as Ehud, that poor deer, would grow the more he ate, yet more a skeleton. Some have piles and some have goiters, most of them have Bright's disease. Uric acid has made them flaccid, and one gouty hero loiters, ankylosed in toes and knees. Tis duty drags their aching carrion through the rain and through the mud. England calls, from Windsor walls sounds the once Coburgian clarion, Screaming Empire, Home, and Blood. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Contemplative Soul from Jonah by Aldous Huxley. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Fathoms from sight and hearing, where seas are blind and deaf. My soul, like a fish, goes steering her fabulous gargoyle neff. Her neff of silver and mouldering mother of pearl, with eyes of bulging coral, smouldering down dim green galleries. To climb the brightening ladder of layer on layer of the sea, she dare not. Her swimming bladder would burst in the ecstasy of sunlight and windy motion, white moons and sky's red gates still in the depth of ocean she sits and contemplates end of poem this recording is in the public domain the betrothal of priapus read for librivox dot org by larry wilson dark water the moonless side of the trees the dog star sweating in the roses mind heat curdled to sheer flesh for ease and the sake of coolness having dined i loose a button wrench a stud we belch to the tune of drunk moselle what a noise in the temples hammering blood shall we sit down are we all together well how weedily the river exhales like the smell of caterpillars dung you too collected when i was young but used no camphor 
moth prevails over moths you take me sounding close but god knows where two land rails scrape nails on combs her hair is loose one tendril astray upon the nape of a neck which star revealed is white like an open-eyed tobacco flower frail thurible that fills the night with the subtle intoxicating power of summer perfume and you too your scent intoxicates the smell of clothes of hair the essence of you but for the ferments of moselle i'll swoon in the languor of your perfume and the drowsed delicious contemplation of a neck seen palely through the gloom another hideous eructation and i wake distressingly aware that there are uglier things in life than perfumed stars and women's hair action then action will you be my wife end of poem this recording is in the public domain farewell to the muses read for librivox dot org by larry wilson my typewriter has been writing crookedly for a very considerable time it is so hard to write in meter and rhyme with a typewriter that writes crookedly lines should look clean and decent to the eye and mine have ceased to do so and so that is why i am ceasing to be a poet because my typewriter writes so exasperatingly so distressingly crookedly end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of jonah by aldous huxley